record has been cross-format focused for airplay success. As you well know, a record must break on radio in order to actually provide a living for the artists involved. Up until now, you've had to make these record-breaking decisions on your own, relying only on perplexing intangibilities like taste and intuition. But now, there's a better way. The cut that follows is the product of newly developed compositional techniques based on state-of-the-art marketing analysis technology. This cut has been analytically designed to break on radio, and it will, sooner or later. Well, folks, that was uh, a little taste of Negative Land. And this is a band, uh, it, it's, I say band, this isn't really a band. Um, this is a collective of, um, started off as uh, four guys, um, and they made, we'll focus on the three albums that they did on SST. They're on the SST record label, which most of you will know for, uh, you know, kind of a, an American punk label, a hardcore label. And uh, Negative Land was um, more of a, a media spoof than, than music. Um, although there is some music uh, involved in it, and, um, and a lot of the spoofing that they do is on, on, the, um, on the music industry. I became familiar with this because uh, this record used to get sampled this one and, and another one uh, used to get sampled quite a bit in some clubs and uh, DJs would use little bits of, of uh, these and it always made me curious until I eventually found out you know that they were they were sampling from from negative land and these these records are overtly um, subversive they're overtly political in a lot of ways um, you know not not political in the you know kind of Republican Democrat American version of that, but just more uh, questioning the kind of um, you know you heard a little bit in that clip right there, you know which is kind of this uh, the, the very first track on here, which is uh, Quiet Please, which is just this little sample of of how we're deceived and how marketing what they've what they've uh, call marketing, you know is really. Uh, they're kind of overtly telling us we're trying to deceive you. We're going to come up with strategies to try to get you to do things that you might not otherwise be inclined to uh, um, to do. And we become so accustomed to this idea that we think it's normal. We think that that's the way things are supposed to be done. We're supposed to be we're supposed to manipulate you to get you to buy stuff. And and Negative Land kind of takes all of that to task, revealing little bits by um, using samples from um, radio shows or, or um, um, clips from one, one that they use, uh, one that I really, really like on here is a track called Time Zones. You can see, you can hear it on, on YouTube. And um, it's kind of a, a, a spoof on the kind of, um, you know, if you ever listen to the kind of, you know, um, right wing, uh, AM radio, right wing uh, um, talk shows that were really, really popular in the in the 1990s, um, when radio was kind of the only outlet. You know, when AM radio had become a, a kind of abandoned uh, abandoned portion of uh, of the industry at the time, and um, a lot of political right wing folks found that there was an audience there for their message. And um, the most successful one became, you know, Rush Limbaugh, who I think people probably know. And um, so they kind of make fun of some of the kind of um, inane conversations that were had. Um, again, just taking to task um, little bits and pieces of, uh, of, of our society and, and uh, the way we tend to, to look at things and, and um, they, they get uh, dismissed. Uh, you know, one of the spoofs that, uh, that Negative Land did was they did press releases on things that weren't true and sent them out to major news agencies. And the idea was that they were amazed at how many of those, all they did is made up their own press release. Faxed it back then, they were faxing, faxed it or sent it to um, major news outlets 
and a few hours later they were repeating those um, uh, those fake news stories as if they were real and that they were trying to do what negative land was trying to do is show how easily manipulated the media can be if they can do it they're just four guys sitting around an apartment deciding to do this if they can do that what can a multi-billion dollar corporation do? How can they manipulate the news uh, when it comes to, you know, the food that we eat, uh, the things that we take in our bodies, the medicine that we take, all part of that kind of grand manipulation that's going on. And that's what Negative Land kind of wanted to show. Um, I don't have a copy of this other album that I want to talk about. It's called U2. Uh, the number, uh, you know, the, the letter U and the number two is how they called it. Obviously, it was a spoof on the band U2. And uh, who had kind of, at that point in their career, was kind of putting themselves forward as this kind of, uh, you know, alternative mainstream band. But they weren't, you know, they weren't like the old corporate, you know, rock bands. They were different. They were they were earnest and they cared about people and they did fundraisers for, for famine victims and those are those are good things you know. That, that. But um, um, Negative Land kind of wanted to show that really, in the final analysis, U two is a corporation, and that corporation has tentacles that will, if anyone tries to mess with the income flow, the revenue stream coming in supporting that com corporation, the corporation will crush whoever's trying to do that. So they do this album and it's really kind of mocking and making fun of, of, uh, of U2. And it became a, a huge battle, a, a huge legal battle, which the, the Negative Land documented really, really well and later published a book on, which I've actually uh, flipped through. It's, it's a pretty interesting uh, Pretty interesting read to see what happened in court, how how U2 was absolutely ruthless in going after these, you know, they, there was no money on the other side of it, but they were, they were brutal in going after to make sure that their copyright was, was secured and to make sure that their revenue wasn't, and, and that their image wasn't tarnished um, or exposed, that they were they were really just a, just another corporate band. And uh, so it, it's a really interesting area of, uh, of music. If this kind of thing intrigues you, um, it's not something that you listen to for, uh, hey, I'm going to throw on the Negative Land album. It's, some of it's, it, much of it is very funny. It can be a little creepy sometimes um, in a good way, you know, not in a, um, but mostly kind of uh, humorous. And um, yeah, there's the back cover right there. And that, the image on the back cover is uh, time zones. They're talking about the, uh, the Soviet Union and how there were 11 time zones. You really have to hear it to, uh, to believe it. And it's just this kind of ridiculous conversation that goes on between this host and, this, uh, and the caller and how meaningless in the end it, it really all is. Um, Highly recommended. Uh, there are three albums. If you can, uh, there is another version of uh, of the the letter U and the number two that came out that uh, I believe took out some of the samples that were uh, that they were forced to to later take out. I consider this the the best thing that they did. It's funny. Um, it's 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 a great listen when you're in the mood for it, and it does have something to say. And I think it it can be be revealing um, and send you down a path into thinking a little bit differently about um, you know, music, the music industry, copyright laws, all of those things, and start to question what we've been sold and, and really kind of question the whole idea of marketing and um, that, it's, that it's kind of put forth as, a, as if it's this kind of really kind of um, harmless you know, activity just it's marketing, you know, you know, at the at the core of that being that marketing really is, you know, a manipulation. So, um, yeah, something different to take a look at. If you're curious, go, you can go on YouTube and you can listen to to this one. This is probably the best one, I think. Um, listen to YouTube. Listen to that one. The letter U and the number two. 
um, is how you'll find it. Um, this one's maybe a little more musical than the other ones, but they're all worth hearing. And uh, this came out in 80, 87 on SST. These can be found, I, I, I mean, I, I haven't looked recently, but I can't imagine that they're more than a few bucks to, uh, to track these down. Maybe they've gone up, I don't know. I think I paid five bucks for mine. Um, and it's a, it's a great little addition to the collection when you're in the mood for something subversive and you're sick and tired of the inflation and, the, um, and everything that uh, we are kind of forced to endure. Um, this is a good anecdote uh, for a lot of that. And, um, and it can make you feel uh, like somebody's on to the joke and uh, revealing it a little bit, and that can be uh, empowering. So anyway, something a little bit different, Negative Land, not really a musical band, but a kind of media collective, and um, something worth checking out. All right, thanks for listening, and uh, see you later.